Interesting. You can find a number of different definitions depending on where you're living around the world. Uh, being an American, I'm kind of stuck with things like the AFCO type definitions. In that definition, it would be a food that's added to another food to improve the nutritional value and or the performance of that food. The supplements that I think I've prescribed most frequently has been for the animal that was having lameness due to chronic osteoarthritis. And now more recently, with the introduction of many probiotics, prebiotics, and symbiotics, the use of those substances or supplements to help with many different disease, things like diarrhea. I think many of us in veterinary internal medicine started using supplements for joint disease, liver disease, and then we kind of all branched into the probiotic, symbiotic world, especially with gastrointestinal diseases. But what's really amazing in the most recent past is then finding probiotics that do other things. One of the organisms that we've studied called Enterococcus thesium SF68 it was proven by researchers in Nestle over on the European side that it was an immune stimulating probiotic in puppies. I was so fortunate to get to do that early work in cats and so now we know here's a bacterium that actually turns on both T cells and B cells which is a quite fascinating new pathway for supplements. And even more recently, in both two-legged animals and four-legged animals, we now know that some organisms in the probiotic world, especially in the bifidobacterium longum group, there's actually a gut-brain axis that can be manipulated by a supplement. And there's work now both in dogs and cats with managing stress and anxiety in those species with a food additive, a supplement which will be great work in, to build on in the future. We now have more and more diets that are also specifically designed for certain abnormalities like joint disease. And some of those joint type diets actually have done away with the need for a lot of additional supplements. But then frequently we might want to use a different diet and then joint supplements as an additive to that diet could frequently be used. So what I'm gonna to need to see first as a veterinary internal medicine specialist is a condition that needs to be supplemented that I can't control just with a good veterinary prescription diet. Next, I'm gonna to need to have information that that supplement has actually been proven effective for that syndrome. It needs to be a supplement that's safe. To help me then decide which supplement in that class to purchase, because there are frequently multiple manufacturers making supplements in the same space. As we know, there's less regulation than there are with a drug. And so then we're gonna to need to compare the quality of that supplement, the ingredients of that supplement. And that's something I put on that company. I'll use probiotics, for example, just because they're a hot topic these days. But the first question I ask a probiotic supplement supplying company is to see their colony counts of their probiotic at the end of the shelf life not at the beginning of the shelf life, but if you say I can sell this for two years, can you show me the data that the bacteria is still alive at that two year point? Another great part of safety of probiotics, most of our audience today probably have seen Dr. Weiss's papers on testing for probiotics and commercially available products that are purported to have probiotics, which remind yourself, the organisms have to be alive. Well, in both of those studies, there were probiotic containing products that actually didn't have any live organisms, and occasionally pathogenic organisms were found. And so having good quality control that the company representative can convince me is gonna be a very big step before it becomes in our pharmacy at my institution.
Yes, there are definitely potential dangers to supplement. Think about vitamin A and over supplement causing liver toxicity in cats. Think of giving a probiotic that had a pathogenic salmonella or an enterotoxigenic E. coli. So definitely there would be potential for causing problems, which is so important then for our lay people, our owners, before they just make a decision from the internet, they should get a recommendation from their doctor of veterinary medicine. I'm living in Colorado and a lot of people like supplements in my state and so the conversation is often initiated by the owner. If the owner initiates it, then I can provide them accurate information on their disease syndrome that they're trying to help, and then we can do a critical evaluation of the supplement that they might have previously decided to purchase. On the other side, when I initiate the discussion, it's going to be because of the presence of a clinical syndrome that I believe a supplement could improve the life of that pet by lessening discomfort, shortening disease, illness, duration. And so it's really important, I think, for us to learn in every history of every health exam or illness exam, what are they putting in that pet's mouth? Not just what is your food, what pet food you're eating, but also supplements, which then opens the conversation and we can talk about those things that have been proven to be beneficial versus those that have not. I would really like to close on the supplement discussion by recommending that veterinarians that don't feel comfortable in this space work with their company representative and, and the name brand companies that we all know make good quality control. We do have the American Academy of Veterinary Nutritionists. We also have the American College of Veterinary Nutrition. And for those of you that might be watching uh, from around the world, the WASAVA, the World Small Animal Veterinary Association, our global nutrition guidelines and consultants are available to you. So anytime you have a question, reach out to someone with great training in that area to make sure that we're using things in the supplement category that are safe and effective. The Purina Institute is a great entity. I've been getting to work with that group for a period of time now and to be able to have a group interested in nutrition and supplements providing just science not product information has been a great benefit to me and I share that with my students.